Beneath the stars so bright Pull your hat down Make sure your cinch is tight Horse is kinda snuffy Cold chill up your spine They'll get your ass Moving sun will burn on daylight Kenley and we're burning daylight. Welcome to Burning Daylight, the only podcast for the working cowboy. Well, howdy there, daylight burners. <clears throat> Happy Monday. Hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, seems like it's warming up around uh, some places. I don't know. It's it's windy as shit here today, and uh, I mean that quite literally. Uh, a lot of shit flying in the feedlot today, and uh, yeah, it wasn't all that much fun, but what are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do about it? Um, I don't know. We could uh, we could buy into uh, the like the green movement and, uh, and ban blowing manure. I think that might be what the the solution to all of it is but um until then uh i'll I'll run it by this next guy that that i'm gonna visit with i'll run it by him see if he can if he can do something about it because that's that's what we need uh see i'm I'm sure he's got a great uh a great plan in mind but anyhow um uh really really good uh interesting conversation today with uh, tony cowden he is a uh, former uh green beret special forces a uh, guy retired and now he uh he started a uh, a crossfit gym uh his own several businesses but uh, uh anyway he is a uh, he's now candidate congressional candidate for the house of representatives third district of north carolina uh which is in his home state and i believe uh looks like he uh his uh his hometown is actually in in this district so um, I believe it's like the Fort Bragg area. Um, don't, uh, don't quote me on that. Go, go check out his site. But anyway, I've got it here pulled up, uh, tonycowden.com. And, uh, like I said, he's, uh, he's a former special forces guy. He's a principal, principal conservative leader, veteran, and a successful small business owner based in Sampson County, North Carolina. Spent 20 years, uh, over 20 years of his life fighting America's enemies. Just when he thought his generation's wars were over, a new cl- conflict emerged. This time it, w- it is a conflict to protect the values we cherish, your children's futures, and the very soul of our country. Make no mistake, <clears throat> this will be the most difficult fight Tony has ever engaged in. He needs you to join him and get in the fight. So, um, he, I'm glad, to, uh, I'm glad that I'm not telling you about him just from reading his, uh, his website, even though, uh, uh, that's what I got pulled up here, but uh, just just to let you know, I, I really like this guy. I think he's uh, he's a really interesting um, just person in general uh, with a wealth of uh, life experience, and uh, <clears throat> he uh, he seems like one of those guys that doesn't say something if you don't mean it, and um, like true to the form, I, I've uh, you know I've interviewed and and got to be pretty friendly with several uh, special forces. Uh, veterans uh in the past couple of years and uh and they they're all kind of the ones that i've dealt with anyways they're i've been pretty well the same mentality and um and like i like we talked in the in the interview here i i've always kind of felt the like the cowboy mindset and like those um a lot of the military type m- mindsets uh, in particular when you get to the, like the the smaller smaller operation types like the like the special forces seals the uh, force recon the you know your, your special operations community they uh they have a very very much kind of the same mentality that you have to uh, you got to figure out how to how to solve a problem with what you have and uh, and you quit when it's all done you don't you don't find a quitting time uh no you you you, you quit when the do- job is done so um Anyway, it was a good conversation. I enjoyed visiting with him. He's a hell of a good guy, and uh, I think you'll like him. So anyway, here's... uh, uh Oh, <clears throat> before we get into it, let me mention one more time. Uh, Casey Howell uh, is having a Benefit Ranch Rodeo. Um, got boogered up in a, in a horse wreck, and uh, 
Yeah, he's going to need some help uh, with uh, with those hospital bills because uh, America, right? You know, <coughs> a place where we can we can make more money than anywhere else on earth, but uh, also spend it all on health care. So anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Kelsey, uh, Casey could, uh, I doubt he'd ever admit it, but uh, he uh, he could probably use your help uh, uh, quite a bit. So anyway, there's a a GoFundMe and a uh, uh, and a Facebook group. It's a hashtag on fire ranch rodeo. I think I really got to do a better job of remembering what that what that group is. But um, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. anyhow if uh if you can't find it uh shoot me a message and i'll uh i'll get you squared away and i'll i'll try to remember to put a uh, a link to to that group in the comments and there's also a gofundme and <clears throat> and all that good stuff uh silent auction it's a good deal for a good cause, so anyway, uh, make sure you check that out. And uh, without further ado, here is uh, Tony Cowden uh, running for U.S. House of Representatives, District 3, North Carolina. Yeah, so I'm I'm here with uh, Tony Cowden, your uh, former Green Beret Special Forces guy, uh, entrepreneur, uh and uh, and now running for uh, the third district uh, House of Representatives in North Carolina. Um, I I had a couple people request uh, to have you on the show. I I've be totally honest with you. I was I had never heard of you until a couple people had uh, messaged me about you, and then um, so I, I said, yeah, why not? I uh, and then I listened to you on Andy Stump's podcast, and uh, that was, and I liked that because it was a, it was like a long three hour, and uh, and it was two, two uh, former operators just talking shit, and uh, and so it just I I've a uh, I've a deep uh, respect and kind of a kinship with uh, with military guys, but in particular the like the special operator guys. I don't uh, I, I've never served, but. Uh, just the the kind of attitude that you guys have is uh, aligns a lot with uh, with the agriculture community in, in particular, like the cowboy world, where you know yep. your job's dangerous. You understand that going into it. Uh, right. You don't ask for a whole lot, and also like your 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 job is done when it's done. You don't you don't have a quit in time. It's when the work is done. That's that's when that's you're right. done. That's and right. Yeah. So like the 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 mentality is is very similar from what i understand so i and and like the cowboy community you guys have the best stories uh or the best storytellers because you have the best stories right. and uh and, and so i i was pretty excited after after listening to you i was i was like i think we'll get along just fine and uh and then uh since we first started uh, messaging back and forth, uh, we we're <laughs> we're now on the brink of World War Three, and it's uh, shit has just got weird, <laughs> just really weird. weird. Yeah, really weird. I mean, that's what happens when you have you know impotent or inept or leadership. Um, you know, we we've got a an entire federal government full. I mean, I I'm trying to refine the way I talk a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I think Americans are fed up enough and, and, and are okay with me saying that most of the folks on Capitol Hill and all the folks in the White House are spying with cowards. Yeah. 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 They're, they're a bunch of pussies. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's just, it's, it's very evident. I, you know, a lot of, and I, I saw like a, in particular on, and I always pick on the Republicans because they're, they're more of the people I relate with. I, I, I'm, what? I'm very much a, uh, like a pretty far out there libertarian, but like most of the the people that I interact with and I relate to uh, vote Republican and, and me myself, particularly I, that's what I, the, yeah. the candidates that I, I tend to vote for are on the Republican side. Yeah. And, um, it, it kind of sucks that we have to label ourselves, right? It's right. Term between libertarian and Republican. Yeah. And it's like difference. Yeah. The difference is most libertarians are really for freedom where most yeah. Republicans, 
these days we'll just vote with the Democrats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, like, I pick on the Republicans a lot more than yep. I do with the Democrats because the Democrats, like, it's it's, it's pretty self explanatory why like why I don't like them. I mean, they they yeah. they they do they try to outdo themselves every day. But yeah. like last year yeah. when Ted Cruz was in Cancun, he caught a bunch of shit because and and a lot of Republicans backed him up. So there's nothing he can do. He's a senator. I don't care if there's nothing you can do. You're still a damn tech. Texan, and when your state is going through some trouble, you don't go to vacation on uh, to Cancun on vacation. You just don't do that. Yeah, well, you know, they do. Yeah, they do. exactly. I, I've actually had people ask me because so many of my social media posts are digging in the Republicans. I'll have people ask me, like, which party are you? <laughs> and yeah. I'm, I try to tell them, hey, the left is the left. Yeah. Right. I can see them. They tell me what they want. Um, they tell me what they're going to do. They're like the easiest adversary I've ever analyzed in my entire life. Right. I'm yeah. used to my adversaries like running and hiding and um, doing everything they can to avoid me. The left, they don't care. They're out in the open. Yeah. The Republicans are the, the, the folks I blame for where we're at in America today mm. because, you know, if you look around right now, pick pick a Republican aside from a, just a handful. Yeah. Pick a Republican senator or representatives. And I don't care if we're talking state or federal level. Pick one. Go on their social media. And all they're doing is talking about problems that the Democrats created. Mm -hmm. But when you ask them, hey, 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 remember a couple of years ago when you guys had the House, the Senate, and the presidency? You know, you could have stopped a lot of this mess from happening. Why didn't you? And they won't right. answer the, that. And because the answer to that question is, like you said, they're a bunch of pussies. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and yeah, man, it, it, it disgusts me. Uh, and uh, in, in other company, right? I'm guessing we're, we're talking to a lot of hardworking fellows on here that don't mind, um, yeah. you know, we don't mind a little language or whatever. You know, the reality is, you know, they, I say they laid down. The reality is they've been over mm. for the right. Yep. They've been over, not just laid down and compromise our, our constitutional rights away. And not just for the last decade, but definitely more so in the last decade or even the last two to three years, but for the last 60, 70 years, really, you know, there's that oh, yeah. saying conservatives haven't conserved a damn thing. No. And yeah, Mike, Michael Malice says the conservatives are just progressives driving the speed limit because whatever the, the, you know, the, like the catchphrase, like hot button issue today is for the, con, for the progressives, the conservatives will accept that as commonplace here in about 10 years. That's right. It's, Absolutely. I mean, name it, right. Mm -hmm. Gotten everything they've wanted. And, and it's funny, man. You know, if you look at the left now, I'm kind of like, what else are they going to make up? It's almost like right. they've gotten they want, and now they're just making stuff up. You know, they wanted, you know, the you know feminism was a big thing, right? We want true equality for for women, and I'm pretty sure they obtained it in most cases. Um, and now it's like, huh? Well, let's see if we can get guys in women's sports. Like, wait a second, that's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what are y'all doing? They're literally making shit up. Um, oh, I I have this running running gag on the show where I just I, I try to make the most offensive uh you know <laughs> chauvinist joke I can about it because it's just like aren't men just so fucking awesome that like we we can't allow the women to have their own line of sports even we have to go overtake that. <laughs> like, yeah. What about and? Yeah. Yeah, man, it's pathetic, really. It really is. It's and it, it you know, it breaks my heart, right? Like my, my niece is a, a, a badass lacrosse player, right? Yeah. Uh, and and clearly I, I'm giving up her geolocation when I say lacrosse, but that's a that's a northern sport, right? Yeah. My, my, my sister's a super intelligent, amazing doctor, but she's in biotech, so she's in Massachusetts. My niece, right? Well, as, as aggressive and awesome as a little cross player as she is, like the worst dude on the guys team can still destroy her, yeah. you know, and, and, and even hurt her. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, man. It's, it's just screwed up. And, and yeah. At what point 
do we just say enough's enough, right? And, and I mean, we're clearly beyond that, right? Enough is yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's exactly right. And we're the the part that it like really gets gets under my skin is, uh, and you, you talk about leadership in uh, in uh, in a lot of your your core like base of what you're trying to to put across and that right. that's something that's been missing for for a long damn time because we we just live in the age of just nothing but virtue signaling and and that's it's uh whether it be um you know the entire democratic party who who were in charge of the house at the time with the power uh to enact legislation or pass legislation that would uh maybe help prevent a George Floyd situation in the future. They could have done that, but instead they put on African garb and took a knee for nine minutes. Right. And now we have, uh, we have, uh, people like we banned Russian cats from competing in cat shows over, over solidarity with Ukraine. And it's <laughs> nothing I, is I, done. I was just in a, uh, in a meeting with a gun store owner, uh, you know, childhood friend of mine or whatever. Um, back down to where I grew up, you know, here. And um, on the TV, headline was Starbucks suspends all operations in Russia. And I was like, holy shit, Putin's going to quit now. Yeah, you and, really and, showed him. <laughs> so Putin, right? Like, <laughs> are we kidding ourselves or what here? And don't get uh, me wrong. I'm for supporting our, our NATO allies. But yeah. let's face it, they've been hanging on our coattails for a long time. Right. right? People got all up, upset when Trump you know, got in their, in their asses and told them they had going to have to start paying their, you know, fair share. You know, it's mm. funny. Right? The, the Democrats will say that me and you need to pay our fair share and our corporation need to pay our fair share. But when it came to the, our allies, they're like, eh, do they really need to? Right. Well, here we are. And what we're seeing now is a failure of the Obama administration and now the Biden administration not pressing. And we could go back the Bush administration, mm -hmm. the Clinton administration, um, and probably Bush senior. They didn't really hold NATO to its, its full standard, right? They, you got to hold your feet, the feet in fire when it comes to our, our allies, they still have to pay their fair share. Well, and it's not even their fair share. It's their designated share. It's their mm -hmm. share that agreed to, and they haven't been. So we've been putting the bill for NATO for so long. Well, guess what? Now we have a Russia that's threatening it. Yeah. And and let's face it, man. People are if you, if you look across all those representatives and all these daggone warmonger types, they're saying things like, "Well, Russia is just going to continue advance through Ukraine." Okay. No, they're not. And here's why. They can't. They can't sustain an occupation of the Ukraine, right? They're going to fail simply because the last 20 years of war have shown every population on this planet how to fight a superpower. Yeah. Right? You know, you would think we'd have learned our lesson in Vietnam, not televised, not on social media. You'd think Russia would have learned this lesson in Afghanistan, not, not televised. You think maybe we learn our lesson because of Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Yemen, uh, yeah, all those Syria. other <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> learn our lesson, right? But we don't. Um, so here we are talking about, you know, Ukraine, the Ukrainian people are going to beat Russia. Now, do I think they're beating Russia as badly as the media is telling us right now? Here's the deal. I promise you they are not. I know for a fact they are not. Um I have friends there and it's driving me crazy. I'm not there right now. Um, but I've, I've got, you know, my buddies that are on the ground and, you know, they've already shown us that that whole pilot thing, the ghost of, um, of Kev was fake. Yeah. Right? That pilot, that whole thing was a video game. Yeah. And, yeah. So we're getting a lot of, a lot of propaganda right now and shutting off the Russian media to be spread around the world is a bad thing. That's, That's a terrible good, idea. Good open source information, right? That's a good thing. Let those yeah. Russian soldiers post the Facebook, right? Well, you know, isn't, that old, uh, isn't one of the, the main things in Sun Tzu's Art of War is know your enemy? 
<laughs> and do not interrupt them when they're making mistakes. Right. <laughs> right? It's it's um, amazing how much and and like yeah. go, going back to just like failed policy that that led up to this. Uh, like we we all we've all wanted peace uh, ever since the the nuke was created. Like you know, right. like the the Cold War was. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of great memes that have popped up. I and mean, it's just like dogs barking at each other uh, from across the fence and basically what the Cold War was. But people forget there was also a lot of conflicts that even though we didn't fight Russia directly, we uh, we we a lot of people died over that shit. Yeah. And uh, like we don't need to go back to that. And we told Russia or the USSR back in 93 or four, like not one inch further east on NATO. And what has gone on up, up or since then is we have moved NATO all the way to Russia's doorstep. We yeah. withdrew from the missile treaty and put uh, the uh, missile uh, yeah. batteries in Poland. <laughs> and Right. I mean, if you, if people could take a mature assessment, a synthetic mm -hmm. assessment. And if uh, I use that term, it it of without emotional linkage or bias, right? Synthetic worldview. If you were an analyst and I may have been an analyst a few times in my life. Yeah. You would see that in this, in that case, that the, the case you just spoke about Estonia, uh, Lithuania, we added members of NATO and put them on that border. Yep. We backed Russia into a corner. A lot of people don't know this. Vladimir Putin requested to join NATO. Mm -hmm. He asked Bill Clinton and Bill Clinton blew him off. Yeah. It's almost that like it almost solves of, all of uh, the world problems if with it, Russia being part of NATO. Right. And, and what if, right? Clearly, right now it's not the right answer. But what if Bill Clinton and George II had started treating Russia like a neighbor instead of an enemy? And I didn't say mm -hmm. ally, I didn't say friend. I'm talking about a neighbor, right? Like mm. that you just coexist with. They have oil. We have oil. They have, we have, right? Yeah. We, we just play nicely mm. and we don't back each other in the corners. We don't force Russia into a, uh, an allegiance, an alliance with China, right? It's like, we can't see past our front side post. And right. Drive thing. And if you look at, at the NATO countries in particular, we buy, or we did up until today, uh, buy like half a million barrels of oil a day from Russia. Uh, 65 percent of germany's uh or for, maybe it 40 percent of germany's entire energy comes from russia uh turkey buys uh missiles from russia why 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 is russia not part of nato and then then we don't have all the bullshit right <laughs> like god damn you know, man it, it breaks my heart man and pisses me off frankly to listen to you know some sitting members in congress you know pound their fists and rattle sabers because you, what is a, what's the likelihood of a single sitting member in our U.S. House of Representatives or the Senate going to combat? No, oh, yeah. Is it somewhere around uh, zero? I'm yeah. Um, and they have historically, and I get it, man. I get it. I, I volunteer for very, very many deployments to combat. It, it's all I knew. Right. It's all I knew. And I have no problems continuing to go into war for this country, wherever our commander in chief sends us. All right. Mm. That's the soldier in me. Yeah. Now, the American that cares about Americans, man, there needs to be zero American boys and girls sent to fight another war. Mm -hmm. There's not a conflict on this planet that, that merits. American blood. Yeah. The Ukraine, and this is part of what really aggravates me, right? Um, I'm fairly well educated on the Ukraine just because of my background and work. Um, I had to go to a course where an entire case study of the last 20 years of the Ukraine, it was the primary focus of the entire six week course. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
the Ukrainian president, not duly elected, right? Very much fraudulent elections. And then yeah. he locked up his opposition, right? He's literally not any different than Putin. Ukraine is the fourth most corrupt country on this planet. And here all of a sudden we're touting them as this, they're like this amazing ally, uh, you know, Democrat, you, you democratic nation. And that's just mm-hmm. not true. So when I see these representatives and senators and other influential people posting on social media, either a, they're distant, they're, they, or they're ignorant. They have no mm-hmm. clue what they're talking about. They're like, Oh, let's fight for Ukraine. Or they're being disingenuous, dishonest for some type of gain. Yep. And yeah, that pisses me off because like I said, I'm not afraid of conflict. If we need to go to war and our uh, United States security or even our interests, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes we go to war for interests, not just secure and defense. Yep. I'm willing to go right now. I'm not a problem. I've never missed a deployment unless I was in the hospital from an injury sustained on another deployment. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you, this ain't a fight American boys and girls need to go get into. And now I've had, I've had young men contact me and ask me about going there. Well, you know what? If you fly to Poland right now, they'll let you across the border to join their militia and help fight. So if you feel the calling as a young American, you know, young wannabe badass, I get it. I I understand the call to war, right? I understand that some young men want to feel like, or they feel like that's how they need to prove themselves. Well, you don't need a a military cat card, a a U.S. military cat card to go fight in Ukraine right now, right? So if you want to, go ahead. I would say take a few minutes, go to the range, get familiar with an AK-47, go ahead. But you know what? Our government does not need to mobilize and deploy troops to the Ukraine. No. I mean, that leads us to World War Three, period. And that's yep. the wrong. Man. That is the wrong answer. Well, that's that's the thing is uh, like the the war mongering has has been around since you know ever forever, but. It's one thing when you're warmongering for us to go beat up on some Iraqis, but it's another thing when you've got the only only other world power with as many nukes that we have on the other side and also just as much time of uh, building up espionage and counter espionage and 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 dynamic. Here's a variable in that equation. Their president is Vladimir Putin. Not yeah. <clears throat> Joe Biden. <laughs> right? um, yeah. His his minister of defense is a hardened hardened general. We've got Millie's fat ass. Yeah. If <laughs> uh if if Putin's gonna shit himself in front of somebody, he's gonna do it out of dons. <laughs> Not out of uh just general rectal failure. It's nuts, man. It is nuts. So, yeah, you know, they get us into these situations. It's like, okay, so how do we get out? Yeah, okay, well, now we're kind of committed. We definitely have to stand alongside of our NATO allies um, and tell, you know, and, and even support the Ukrainians, right, with hardware, logistics, intel, those things. Not American blood, again. Yep. But, yeah, okay, give them other stuff. But, you know, it's screwed up, man. We start sending them javelin anti-tank rockets, right? Man portable anti-tank rockets. You know, what are they? Freaking $750,000 a piece? Yeah. Well, oh, God, man. You know, I just, like I said, I just filled my truck up at $4.68 a gallon. Yeah. You know? And, and well... And the thing that gets me is uh, like further down the road. I mean, this is how this is how it started with the Mujahideen. And next thing you know, we're back in Afghanistan fighting them. And I don't want, you know, 15 years from now, my son to have somebody shooting a fucking javelin missile back at him that uh, we gave to the Azov battalion to fight the Russians with. But all of a sudden now they're the bad guys in, in Europe. 
But, you know, like yeah. that that's how it's always happened throughout history. Always. Yeah. I mean, you know, I saw a, a you know joke post or whatever, you know, the other day that was said something like, you know, Biden called the Taliban and asked if we could get some of that equipment back. So he, <laughs> no shit. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, that's funny. You know, I don't know, man. You know, best I can tell is the second you get to DC. Well, let's face it, right? Certain types of people are drawn to certain types of professions, right? Yep. You know, some men are, you know, I don't know. They've aspired to be painters their whole life, like art types type, not like hard yeah. working type. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like some men grow up their whole life. They want to be firefighters. And I don't blame them because let's face it, firefighters are heroes no matter yep. what. <laughs> <That's wrong. laughs> I know y'all are heroes. Yep. Um, police officers, protectors, uh, military, right? Uh, mm. You know, maybe you want to be a daggone a rancher. And then there are just some folks that want, that will always be called the, to the easy route. Yep. So, you know, stereotypes exist for a reason. And so when I look at people who have sought political careers their whole lives, when you look at them, they fit a certain stereotype. You know, they're, they're typically not the same type of people who volunteered to go to war or be a firefighter, mm. right? They tend to be softer, right? Yeah. Softer. Yeah. Little, and those, uh, don't, little s- yeah, squirrely. Yeah. Wormy, soft, amoebas, whatever you want to call them, right? Ted they Cruz. Tend- <laughs> yeah, they are. They are, man. They will. They will. <laughs> they will feel whatever. They they'll take any shape of whatever form they're you know poured into. Yeah, and that's you know- that's that's sad because you know we watch them make decisions that benefit themselves and corporations, and rarely, rarely their constituents. Yeah. Uh, and, and much less, you know, the people of the United States. And it, well, I mean, that's why I'm running, right? I mean, I, I, I don't want a career in politics. I'm not going to have a career in politics. I've promised. I, most I'll ever do is four terms. Eight years is all anyone's going to get out of me. Yeah. And it, it won't be four. It could be less if I get yeah. elected. I, I'm just not cut out for this. I had somebody tell me the other day that, you know, now in the district three, I'm challenging an incumbent and he's not a very well liked incumbent. He's his voting record is very rhino, almost borderline Democrat. In some cases, very Democrat. And somebody told me the other day, he said, Hey man, challenging an incumbent could ruin your political career. I was like, <laughs> wow. you know, I, those are two words. You don't, that's a phrase you don't have to apply to me because I don't want a political career. That's not what I'm doing this for. You know, I'm, I'm doing this for you know, my neighbors, my friends, my family. Mm. And here's the cool thing, right? Here's the real cool thing. There are eight other special forces guys running around the country. There are seven Navy SEALs running around the country. And there's a couple of Rangers, right? And then there's like 30 other global war on terrorism veterans. Yeah. Well, let's half of us, just half of us, 15 get elected. That's a caucus. Yeah. That's a group of people you got to ask for permission or whatever you want to do. I don't care what you are, right? That's enough votes to have a, a big sway and a potential to set us up for positive change. And note what I said the potential to set us up for positive change. I'm a realist. I I know for a fact that freshman representatives don't walk on the Capitol Hill and save the world, right? And most candidates will tell you that, right? Yeah. Like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go change. You know, Capitol Hill. Two years later, you find them. You know, they're the same as everybody else. <laughs> you uh, you know, it's funny is that uh, both Marjorie <laughs> Taylor Greene and AOC figured out real quick that uh, <laughs> that Congress goes how Pelosi wants it to go right now. Yeah, but check it out. What if Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, Madison Cawthorn or 
any of these other very young, energetic people, I think, that really want to make America better. What if those folks all of a sudden had a QRF, right? Backup mm. that was compromised or comprised of 10 special operations guys, senior enlisted special operations guys, and another 10 global war on ter- terrorism veterans with all kinds of cool backgrounds. That's that's a force. That's a force to be reckoned with, right? And that's why I yeah. say it could set us up to change things for future positive change. That's, yep. that's what we're bringing to bear in this whole thing. And I'll tell you, we're getting some pushback and not from the Democrats. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. The, the Republicans are real snaky about that. They, uh, they don't like, uh, they don't like a challenge to power either. No, no. And they know that we're not the type of men to come up there and just fall in into the party line, you know, go toe to line. Yeah. Special operations guys are well known for not being very good at following orders. We accomplished yeah. Right. Like I've never been really given orders in my entire career. I've been given missions. Yeah. Right. That we accomplish. We're not really good at the whole military thing. Right. Like back in the day, we had boots. We were supposed to shine. If you went over to Special Forces, you know, area at uh, Fort Bragg, at third group or seventh group back then. Yeah. It wasn't a whole lot of shine boots, you know, <laughs> um, uniforms all weren't always perfectly pressed. Right. Because we're good at soldiering and unconventional warfare, not dog and pony shows. So, yeah, man, we represent a paradigm shift, a potential paradigm shift in the way our nation, in the, in the type of people that our nation would have running it. It's huge. Like I said, it's not easy. It's not getting a lot of support, man. You yeah. Know? Um, running against an incumbent completely cut off the, the few, the few people that were going to support me in DC second, the district changed, And I announced that I was going to run against an incumbent ghosted me gone. No support, even though they know I'm the better Kenny. Yeah. But they don't, they care about protecting the GOP. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's the sad truth of all of it. Yeah. Um, Going back to the, like on the, you know, like special forces guys, uh, uh, maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Cause like you said, like, you don't, you got missions, not orders because uh, from what I understand, like your team room was like very much a, like, let's figure this shit out. You know, like, especially when shit goes wrong, like, like right. oh, well, we put blame where blame goes because if not, then people die. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I told somebody today, like, hey, man, you can criticize me all day long. I'm not going to get upset. I'll probably just listen to it. Uh, You know, some of the best criticism comes from our adversaries, people who don't like us, because they see us through a different lens. If you listen to them, they might tell you exactly what you need to make yourself better Mm -hmm. or to accomplish the mission in this case. But, yeah, man, problem solving, right? That's how we see the world. A mission is a, is a complex set of problems. Nothing more, right? You, you got a broken gate or a busted fence. It's yeah. a problem. There is a solution. You have a toolbox. And you just got to select the right tools. And then sometimes, right, you're out working and you don't have all the right tools. Well, then you do the best you can with what you got. Yeah. But you still get the work done. And it doesn't matter what time it is. You work all night if you have to, throughout the next day if you have to, but the work's got to get done. Yeah. You know? um, I think I've, uh, I, I've been, you know, I'm not like any of the candidates, any of the people I've been working with that have been supporting me, my consultants and all that. I'm not like anyone they've ever worked with before. And I surprise them twice a week at least. Uh, you know, like how little sleep I need or, you know, just the amount of time and, and how fast I get things done and how fast I expect things to get done. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? 
um, the, the standard that I hold people, I say, Hey, we need to get this done this week. Right. And they're like, okay, cool. I'm like, when can you have that done? Thursday at noon. Well, Thursday at noon, I expect it to be done. If yeah. it's not Thursday at 1150, I need to update. Yeah. Probably close earlier than that. And, and they're just not used to working with someone like me who is just, you know, um, and that, that's clearly what our nation needs right now. People who can, without emotional bias, people who can't be bought, right? Mm. There's not a corporation on this planet that has something I want. You know, I don't want a boat. I don't want, I don't need an airplane. I don't, you know what I mean? There's just the things I value corporations don't have because I value experiences. I like to go hunting with my girlfriend. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, at some point you might be able to buy one of them Russian super yachts now that they just, uh, <laughs> you know, just impounded it. <laughs> like, you know, I used to joke that, um, the only way I'd really want to, you know, I, I learned at a young age that, you know, the only kind of boat, the only good kind of boat is your friend's boat. Yeah. But boats don't interest me anymore. I, I grew up on the coast seafood business. And then I accidentally on a dare went to dive school. So then I got pinned on a dive team. I'm pretty good with the water. But more than this, right? Like to me, a yacht, like, you know, we grew up with what MTV, right? Yeah. Like back when MTV actually had music videos. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, you know, that, that whole yacht thing, that was like those the rap stars. They had the, uh, the girls in the bathing suits and all that. Well, you know what? I'm Boats not in hose, man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but check it out, man. I'm like I said earlier, I'm a realist. And in the world I live in, my girlfriend Melissa ain't letting me hang out on a boat with a bunch <laughs> of you know, big booty girls and you know, party. That that time of my life is over. Not yep. interested. Not interested. I'd much rather head out to Idaho or Montana and spend a week in the mountains with my girlfriend hunting elk or deer or whatever else, you know, and, and you just can't sell me that. That's, yeah. you know, <laughs> you, you guys are both really into the, into the fitness stuff too, right? Like, are you CrossFit types or? Uh, so I owned a CrossFit gym, um, you know, in what little bit of spare time I had when I moved to Wilmington, me and my buddies needed a place to work out. You know, we'd come mm -hmm. home from my, and we would just stay on Iraqi time. So we'd go to bed at, you know, three or four in the morning, Eastern time, get up at noon or two, you know, and clearly the local gyms didn't really support our CrossFit style of training. You know, we were used to training in prison type gyms in Iraq and Afghanistan. So we wanted something like that. Long story short. Yeah. I opened a CrossFit gym. I don't do anything half ass. Uh, so it went from like a little hole in the wall gym, like 1200 feet. Uh, square feet to a 22,000 foot gym with almost a thousand members. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> and um, so, yeah, we had a dojo, we had a, a chiropractor, massage therapist. It was a, a big gym. Um, and I used to joke that all I really was, was a janitor and not a trainer. Cause I just had to keep the place clean. I was always cleaning bathrooms. So yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt, folks, but I've got some sponsors that help me keep this thing on the, the air, so I probably better tell you about them. So, first and foremost, we got High Slash Cattle. Uh, profit margins in the cattle industry are tighter than ever, and you can't afford to leave premium sitting on the grid. Using Black Hereford Bulls on your Continental Cattle will help you keep your calves efficient and in the black. High Slash Cattle. <clears throat> it's H.I. Slash Cattle Company, located in the heart of the Nebraska Sandhills, is committed to helping real cattlemen improve their herds. They don't choose fads or fall for the show ring gimmicks. <clears throat> At High Slash Cattle, they raise bulls with grit that know how to work. There are still a few bulls available for this year, and they offer free delivery. Videos and photos of all the bulls are on Facebook and their, their website, highslashcattle.com. That's H-I slash cattle.com. H-I-L, <coughs> excuse me, H-I-S-L-A-S-H dot com. Or you can give them a holler at 970-629-8807. Uh, Jen and Logan Hill are the, the owner-operators there. Uh, great people, and... Uh, 
yeah, they're, they got a, they got a really nice herd. Uh, <coughs> and it's good, good operation, good people all the way around. Uh, go check them out at uh, high slash cattle.com. Um, next up, we got a uh, help wanted post, and this is uh, Ranger Feeders <clears throat> out of Dighton, Kansas. Uh, they're looking for Pen Rider. Uh, let me see. They, like I said, uh, Ranger Feeders looking for a Pen Rider there in Dighton, Kansas. Uh, they're offering competitive pay. Uh, paid vacation, a simple IRA with a 50% match, uh, family medical on uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and life insurance as well. Uh, responsibilities include, but not limited to, checking for sick cattle, uh, horseback or foot, uh, doctoring cattle, weighing cattle for shipment, hauling back to the home pen and washing water tanks. <coughs> um, it's, uh, you know, everybody is looking for help. Uh, nowadays and uh it seems like nobody really wants to work so uh if you're if you're looking for a job and uh you know anything about cowboy or even if you don't and you're willing to work um head over or well give them a holler it's uh six two zero three nine seven uh four put that number on there wrong it's uh Three nine uh six two oh three nine seven three four one one. Um give them a holler if you're if you're looking for for some work. Um next up we've got uh cardomax.com. Uh Cardomax is a uh it's a supplement company and uh Oh, what what should I what do I tell you about Cardomax? They they just make really good stuff. I I drink this stuff every day. Um, uh, this is a energy intensifier, and I've also got immune immunity booster here, immune booster, and it's a uh, it's all natural ingredients. Uh, really good stuff uh, made. Uh, Owned and operated by a former Navy SEAL. Uh, just good stuff. And uh, it, it's uh, all, all the stuff you like about energy drinks or or uh, Gatorade or any any of that type of stuff without all the bullshit. There's no, it's all sugar-free. It's all natural. And they use uh, the least amount of ingredients as possible. And uh, I, I really do drink that stuff every day. And uh, it's, it's good stuff. So uh, head over to cardomax.com. Uh, use the promo code Move Your Ass M O V E Y E R A S S, and you'll get ten uh, percent off your order. Uh, next up, we got GreensReserve.com. Uh, Greens Reserve is a uh, <coughs> all-natural hemp chew uh, snuff. Um, yeah, it's a it's a tobacco alternative. Um, made at a hundred percent hemp. It's all uh, I think it's organic. I can't remember if it's organic or not. Um, but anyhow, it's uh, there's no no nicotine, no THC. And uh, if you head over to greensreserve.com slash shop, use the promo code MATTGR, M-A-T-T-G-R, uh, you'll get a dollar off a roll or or $5 off a roll or a dollar off a can. Uh, and I'll get a little kickback as well. So Greens Reserve, that's G-R-E-E-N-E-S, reserve.com, slash shop. Use the promo code MATTGR for a dollar off a can, $5 off a roll. And if you don't like hearing all these ads, you can always uh, go follow me or subscribe, I, I suppose. Uh, not not follow. Follow, subscribe. Uh, anyhow, go to patreon.com slash burning daylight and... Uh, and you can subscribe there. Uh, several different levels. Uh, you get different perks uh, depending on where you sign up at. But uh, all proceeds go back into the show. <coughs> and um, if, uh, yeah, we, we get some bonus content there as well. Um, you get uh, some extended uh, interviews or just some, some straight up bonus content. And, uh, yeah, try to do some some cool stuff, make it worth your while. But anyway, mostly you're just helping me out. So, uh, 
Oh, also ad free episodes uh, when when you head over there. So burning da or Patreon dot com slash burning daylight. Uh, subscribe, and let's get back into the show. There we are. I, yeah, I uh, I wasn't for sure if that was you or me. My my internet's not real good sometimes, but I I yeah. just got got on the Elon shit, so it's uh it, we're 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 better now. So all right, all right, no, I, um, I don't know where it cut me off at, but we were talking about Melissa being a stud and the CrossFit stuff, and yeah, man, she's a stud. She uh she kills it. I mean, she on her lunch break, heads to the CrossFit gym and does that sort of thing. And, you know, she lifts heavy too, cause she was into powerlifting for a bit. And then she'll get home at night and spend an hour on her, uh, on her bicycle. She got one of those, uh, Pelotons. Yeah. She's all there and upstairs on her Peloton crushing that all the while I'm on the phone doing campaign stuff, getting more and more out of shape, fatter. <laughs> So this hunting season, I'm a little worried that she might crush me up in those mountains. <laughs> yeah, so, no kidding. Yeah, I might have some some makeup. Yeah. Uh, so are you, are you archery or are you rifle hunt? Both. Um, Both? Yeah, here in North Carolina, almost 99% archery because, you know, it's and it's too easy. Um, when I go out west, I haven't done an archery hunt out west. It's just so hard because... I, I do, you know, do it yourself hunts mm. and it's really difficult to, you know, pack up with no scouting, uh, not knowing the lay of the land. A lot of times I get out West, I'm hunting on public land. Mm -hmm. So I got to figure out, you know, where the other hunters are. So long story short, um, I haven't done any, any archery out West yet. I, I really want to this year. I should be going, um, uh, on a, uh, after antelope in New Mexico again, and it's a okay. four day. So my intent is to spend the first two, maybe even three days trying to take an antelope with my bow. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's a really difficult hunt. I'm going to have to do a lot of, a lot of training at like the 80 meter mark, 80 yards or so. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. And then, you know, if I'm not successful, yeah, I'll have a rifle with me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'll always uh, back up. But now, did you did you go to sniper school or? Mm, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So all, you're not you're not worried about taking taking antelope then? No, no. I um I teach a lot of long range. I have one of the very few over thousand meter ranges here on the East Coast, and it's actually a mile long, sixteen hundred meters. And okay. um, yeah, long range is is definitely my passion. I love teaching it. I love shooting it. My joke is it it's uh it's golf for men. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, it's cool because Melissa shoots long range. Um, heck, I'm I'm so proud of her, but I'm also a little bit embarrassed. She did her first precision rifle match two Saturdays ago. And up until now, you know, all everything she's done is like off a tripod, very hunting, you know, mm -hmm. hunting. And PRS is not like that. So she got one day on the range with me shooting off of all kinds of weird barricades. She shoots really well. She understands long range. And, uh, man, I was distracted making phone calls. You know, oh, it's your turn, Tony. Grab my rifle. Go shoot. I wasn't doing very good. The first three stages, man, she crushed them. And I did really bad. Fourth stage, I did okay. She did pretty good. And then the fifth and sixth, I actually did really well on. But it wasn't enough to beat her. Really? She beat me in a in a in a competition. And like I said, partly embarrassed, but so proud. Right? That's she awesome. Did so well. And she got third place overall. And you're talking about uh, overall in the open division. And open division just means that we're shooting a six millimeter instead of like a three oh eight or something. Okay. Uh, for that. Look, you can run a heavier rifle, blah, blah, but whatever. Um, that's not an advantage to her, right? Because, you know, her handling a 22 pound rifle is a lot compared to me. But yeah. it was close to Camp Lejeune. It was a lot of, you know, their entire Marsoc sniper section was, you know, their uh, sniper instructors were there, the Marine Corps sniper, you know, a lot of good, good shooters. And man, in open division, she got third place, man. She crushed it. 
That's uh, awesome. So I, I, like I said, very proud. It definitely speaks a little bit to, you know, how we train and how, I guess how I train, but, um, yeah, man, kind of cool. But, um, yeah, you know, she's got her own rifles, her own kit. Um, heck this weekend, she's going to one of those tactical games. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a tactical games. It's a, a kind of a local outlaw type thing, but it's at Griffin group, which is a, a private training facility right at Fort Bragg. So she'll mm-hmm. be run, running next to a bunch of my peers. That's and awesome. Yeah. She's so physically fit and shoots so well. She'll do really well. Um, That's so cool. yeah, I'm so proud of her, man. And it's always funny because we go to these competitions and, you know, whenever a little bit of that shit talking starts happening or whatever, she'll, she's pretty quick to kind of reel them in a little bit, you know, and then mm-hmm. remind them that she's a dentist. <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. It is, uh, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. She, that, that, that woman is the most precious thing on this planet to me. And she, I don't know that she saved my life, but she definitely saved my, she saved me from myself. If that yeah. makes, I, uh, I certainly wouldn't be living the lifestyle I am today as far as behaving myself. Um, I'm, I'm now faithful to God. I always tell people, right? Like I'm a Christian. I was raised a Christian, but there was a long time in my life. I wasn't very faithful. Yeah. You know, a lot of drinking, a lot of partying, you know, a lot of war, you know, work hard, play hard. Right. Mm-hmm. I know you boys can relate to that. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And so long story short, man, when I met her, I realized that if I tried to continue that lifestyle, I would stand zero chance of her remaining in my life. She's, yeah. she's zero bullshit, bro. Zero. And she keeps me in check. <laughs> that, that's and, uh, good. That, that, that's, she's precious. There's only one of her. So that's how precious she is, you know? And uh, yeah, I'm lucky. Really lucky. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I, I think, uh, I guess I don't know much about the, the politics in North Carolina. I know it's, uh, it's kind of up in the air as far as, uh, you know, swing state, uh, goes, but I imagine it's just about like every other state out there outside. You get outside the city areas, you know, people are pretty, pretty damn normal. Yeah. Conservatives, right? Conservatives are still already in America today. They just don't go vote, man. Yeah. They're not involved. And and you can't really blame them because supposedly their representatives will be at their state capitol or on Capitol Hill representing their interests. Yeah. That is not what we have going on. So I've, I've been telling people, you know, you know, a secondary goal of mine in this whole mess is to educate people and get them involved. So in that education, the easiest way people ask me all the time, you know, how do I get involved? What, how do I, I don't even know how to get involved. And I'm like, okay, there's two easy ways. Google your County's name and the three letters GOP or the words Republican party. And people say, well, F the Republican party. I'm like, Hey, I understand. Understand. The reality is because we're living in reality, not in some fantastical world that the GOP is our only hope. And and our only hope comes in renovating the GOP. That's it, right? You're not changing the Democrats. No, no. none of us are that amazing, right? We, me and you, we don't possess that sort of superpower. No, Um, like Tulsi, (laughs) Tulsi Gabbard's pretty dang good to both sides. And they called her a Russian asset. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That's the thing these days, right? Like, uh, you know, if you don't toe that party line, man, they're going to label you this bad person. And that's not a thing. Like Tulsi's Tulsi's clearly a good person and a very intelligent woman. Um, still a little left leaning, right? I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I would, uh, certainly I wouldn't vote for, for, for president, but you know what? She's doing a, a decent job of not, not just towing that party line, that status Mm. quo. And that's a good thing. And that's how you know someone's doing a good thing is when the establishment attacks them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I like to think uh, if she was sitting down across the negotiating table from Putin, I like our chances. 
Like, I, I think she'll hold her own. You know, it's yeah. she's not a coward. She's not spineless, mm-hmm. right? To yeah. stand up and speak out differently from the Democratic Party, that's a big damn deal. Just like, um, was it uh, the West Virginia Senator uh, Manchin? Oh, Manchin, yeah. Holy crap, man. That took some serious balls. Again, yeah. don't in any way support his politics because he is still very left. But damn, man, you can respect a person for standing up. Yeah, you know? yeah, they were they brought some real heat against him and uh, real heat. And he said yeah. it straight up. I don't work for you. Yeah, and I work well, for West Virginia. well, yeah. he's in a he's in a real precarious spot too because Virginia is very much Trump country, and yeah, uh, yeah he's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know, you know. Uh, <sighs> Like I said, you know, if, if it wasn't for all this mess, you know, like <laughs> people should expect the representatives to go represent them. Uh, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm not running for Congress. And they look at me funny. They're like, wait a minute. I thought you just said you were running for Congress. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm running to be your representative. Yeah. And there's a big damn difference. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, my, uh, my old man ran for, well, he was a state representative, uh, for four terms. And, uh, and he had that very, he, he ran as a Democrat and, and was elected four terms in a very heavy Republican district. And, uh, but it was because he was, he was there as a, as a representative, you know, not, uh, you know, it, let's face it, you know, the two party system, you know, it's antiquated as well. And, and people say all the time, you know, what about a third party? I'm like, well, that would be great, but that would mean, the Democrats and the Republicans relinquishing some of their power and <laughs> yeah. power is rarely relinquished. It's no, almost never. Taken. Yeah, yeah. It's typically taken. And I don't think Americans are ready, right? The, the good, hardworking Americans, well, they got to go to work. They got to take care of their families and that's what they should be doing. Right. That should, mm-hmm. that should, well, should be your priority. But until those hardworking folks have the motivation to get involved in their local government their local GOP or, or a local third party. Mm. We're going to continue to have the same problem. We're going to continue to have a democratic party that's outfunded the Republicans, you know, five to one yep. over the last, you know, 50 years or whatever it's been, you know, we don't, we don't contribute. We typically spend every last dollar on our families and that's a good thing. But mm-hmm. if we don't have some little slight cultural shift, and it wouldn't take much, slight cultural shift to get that majority, that rural majority, to stand up and go to the polls, hit the primaries, right? Like most mm-hmm. people don't even know about primaries. They just know that in November there's an election and they'll go, you know, check all the R boxes or all the D boxes. Mm-hmm. That's got to change, man. You know, that yeah. really does change. And, and I answer a lot of DMs now. A lot of messages, you know, people say, hey, you mentioned getting involved. You know, tell me again how to do that. And I'm like, yeah, Google. Google your county's name and GOP or Republican Party. And those those people are your locals that give a shit, right? Yep. The, they're your, your activists. And it's sad, man. You know, like I'm going to GOP meetings. There are like 15 people there mm. in counties that you know, have hundreds of thousands of people. Well, you know, those GOP meetings, man, you know, they should have, you know, three, 400 people there every month. Yeah. And they don't, they don't. Um, yeah, man, uh, that's, that's part of my frustrating frustration. You know, I, I say America's biggest problem. It's us. We yeah. have the means to change the trajectory of this country. And, you know, until we, you know, I don't point fingers, man. I'm the same guy, right? I, I did many a deployment that I didn't send an absentee ballot in. Many of them, most of them probably. Mm. Um, you know, I was busy. And I get, I understand being busy. So I'm not taking some kind of holier than thou stance. I'm taking the stance that, hey, I've learned my lesson. Let me share it with you and motivate you to join you know, because if we don't, if we don't, man, we're going to just keep having the same damn problems. It only works, right? Yeah. Problems don't get better or with time. Problems get yeah. worse with time. And yeah. We start doing that. 
That's for sure. So yeah. when uh, when is this uh, is your primary election? It's coming up here pretty quick, right? It is real quick, man. Uh, May the seventeenth. Okay, May the seventeenth. A lot of time to challenge an incumbent who's got, you know, almost a million dollars in his bank account and more where that came from. Oh yeah. And versus you know what I'm trying to pull off here, you know, a very grassroots thing. Um, where I'm asking people for 10, 20 bucks, you know, whatever they can give. And, and we've done really well with that. Right. But not to the tune of a million dollars. Yeah. So I'm playing a totally different game game. I'm playing a very ground game here where, you know, it means I have to, you know, shake babies and kiss hands or <laughs> yeah. You know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the one that gets you in the least amount of trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm having to play a totally different game and I'm okay with that game, you know, cause that game means I actually get to meet people and more importantly, they get to meet me. Yeah. You know, they get that I'm not some, you know, politician. I'm not some person who ever wanted to be in politics and I still don't. Right. I loathe this whole mess, mm. but many a mission that needed to be done that I didn't want to do. And that's what yep. this is. This is a, this is simply just a mission and I don't want to do it forever. I've promised I won't do more than four terms and, and I'm not even certain <laughs> I'm not even certain I'm cut out for that. But that'll put me at um that'll put me at uh fifty five years old. And that's still plenty of time for me to go hunt and enjoy the rest of my life, you know. Uh and, and if myself and guys like Jay Collins and the other, you know, SEALs, Eli Crane, a bunch of good guys and and, and gals, Carla Spalding's a G Watt vet, she's running down in Florida amazing amazing woman aggressive intelligent um we can get those folks elected in we can change this mess we can fix yeah. this you know i'm confident because i you know i'm not a suicide mission guy right yeah if i didn't think her country was saved and she's worth saving mm. that's a fact right this country yeah is the baddest, most awesome creation humankind has ever came up with. Right? Yeah, that's a fact. Right? What other nation sent rockets through the moon and outer space and, you know, well, we led that way. We're, this that's America, man. You know, we're worth saving. You know, even our our poorest people, our homeless, are are still all, they're still doing bad as shit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Awesome we are. You know, we got Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Fuck you, Russia. <laughs> no <yeah>. Starbucks. <laughs> there are people risking their lives to get in this country, you know? But hey, mm-hmm. check it out. There's a line. Yeah. Get in the back of it. Yeah. Get in the back, right? But that's a whole nother topic. Um, yeah. If I didn't think she was savable and worth saving, man, I would continue my pretty awesome life. I'm... I, when I tell people, right, that, that I am so lucky, blessed, whatever terminology you want to use, that I have an amazing woman, an amazing piece of property, some amazing dogs, <laughs> who's, I'm not sure what he's doing right now, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, I wouldn't compromise my current situation if I didn't think she was worth saving. Yeah. You know? So anyway, no. that's awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I'm uh, not, Oh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I've never been super passionate about anything in my life. I've always just set a goal and went and accomplished it. Right. I'm a, I'm just that type of person who I, I need a mission. I, and in lack of a mission, I'll find one. Yeah. And this one's a, definitely different. This one's a little more, a little more passionate, um, Whereas, like I said, throughout my life, it's just been, uh, what am I going to do next? You know, like I've had to explain to people, I did some ultra marathons, uh, for a few years and I had to tell people like, I hate running. And they're like, what? But you're running ultra marathons. I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just doing that to see if I can. Right. <laughs> um, I don't like, I never, I never liked running. I, I was good at it for a little while, but I didn't like doing it. It takes a lot of your time and it's boring and you can't get any work done, uh, while you're running. But um, this this is different, man. This is this is the sake of our nation, and it's yeah. a big, you know, it's a big damn deal. 
Yeah, so. I, th- I, th- I think you're right. Um, before we before we let you go, uh, what what do you see coming out of this whole uh, Ukraine Russia thing? Are we gonna are we gonna play it play it the right way? I mean, we haven't played it very well so far, but I don't know. You know, I I gotta I'll say to Biden's credit, he hasn't done anything to get it like further fucked up. Right. I guess. I mean, we'll see how these these sanctions deals play out. But I that that one, uh, I think we all ought to be a little nervous about that situation. It, yeah, definitely, man. I mean, we're 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 literally playing with fire, you know, yeah. some super fire. I, whew, man, I don't like using the word hope. But we are going to have to prey on that dude not stumbling and bumbling us into World War Three. Yeah. Uh, and what scares me is I've learned more and more about the self-centeredness of the American politician is that he knows he has a bunker and a complete support network that he can go hide in. And the rest yep. of us don't. And man, you know, they don't care about us. So that scares me. I, yeah, I, it worries me if they're willing and he was president as a vice president, as a senator, and a lot of our sitting legislators were present as we spent and sent thousands of troops to the Middle East to die for what they didn't care then. Yeah. So what, what is our indication that they care otherwise? Yeah, I mean nobody it's, has been held accountable for the for the the withdrawal of Afghan uh, of Afghanistan. Uh, they got so, soldiers or Marines and soldiers killed. Mm-hmm. Right, that just led to that. And then three days later, they killed a family to because they were trying to do something to change the narrative that was on the TV. They would be able to say, "Oh, look, we killed you know an ISIS member, an Al Qaeda member." No, you killed a family. Yeah. You know, yeah, an, and an people, aid worker you know, and his family. Yeah, you know the the reason why Afghanistan and Iraq continued as long as it did is because we were constantly killing innocent people. Mm-hmm. Mistakes, because you know generals aren't on the battle space anymore, right? No, generals pretty much stay in the U.S. and try to run the, the the war from Tampa. They're not there. Right. When was the last time a general was on the battle? It actually on the battlefield, much less in the battle space. Yeah. Well, you know, we created those enemies. It was a perpetual cycle mm-hmm. of fighting an enemy, creating enemies out of their sons and their nephews and their grandsons. And, and because our politicians aren't aware of how war really works. I'm fearful that they won't make the right decisions. And this is a high stakes game here, man. Some little war over in Afghanistan. Yeah. Were the Taliban or Al-Qaeda ever a true threat to our national security? No. The the, the answer is no. Right. They never threatened our national security. Did they threaten? Could they? Yeah. Well, they showed us on 9-11 that they could attack us. They, they weren't going to do it again, right? Right. They sucker punched us, and that was over. Yep. Uh, Saddam, Gaddafi, a threat to national security? Absolutely not. Dictators are predictable. Mm-hmm. They care about their power. So they're actually easily to manipulate as well. A lot of people don't know that when Saddam was interviewed, he told us that he really thought it was just publicity. He didn't ready... The reason why Iraq wasn't ready for our invasion is because Saddam thought it was just bullshit. Never once did our president try to call him. I knew the weapons of mass destruction thing was bullshit when we went to infill in Iraq and didn't carry gas masks. (laughs) (laughs) If there was a threat, it would have been mandated that we carry those masks. Um, Sadly, the only mask mandate I've ever had in my entire career was here in the States, <laughs> yeah. you know? Insane, so, ain't it? I don't trust them, man. And that's what scares me. I don't trust them to actually give a shit about us. Yeah. They all have okay. to die and survive a nuclear war. And that's just scary to me. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but 
I have prior knowledge, right? We all have mm. prior knowledge. Americans tend to want the best. So they allow that, that want, that wish for things to turn out well to create a bias and change our perception of prior knowledge. Mm-hmm. And that's a scary, scary thing. My prior knowledge tells me that I can't trust this administration and certainly not any other politician. They haven't that, done the right. Why are they going to do it today? Uh, that's right. And and just before people forget that it was a Republican that led us into the Middle East for 20 fucking years. Yeah. And uh, and the entire and, party cheered it on. And, and, and it was a Congress who for 20 years set their constitutional authority aside to declare mm-hmm. war, right? Yep. They're the ones, and they say, well, you know, the executive branch is not a real war, right? So, you know, uh, well, guess what? We actually were fighting sovereign nations. So it does require a declaration of war. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't. And they say, well, you know, what can we do about it? Well, you can stop funding it. Mm-hmm. Right? Like Congress, it's as if they've forgotten that they control the purse. Yeah. You know, the president might say, there we are. Yeah. Dropped it again. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. What I was saying is, you know, the, the president might take us to war and he is the commander in chief. But when you cut off the funding for something, you know, just like last year's what, um, you know, we always hear it, the uh, National Defense Authorization Act every year. Mm-hmm. A fraction of it is actual defense spending. It's so much pork barrel. It's the biggest, biggest scam in mm-hmm. annual legislation, right? And held yeah. this past year. How many Republicans voted for the red flag laws that were included in it? Oh, yeah. And continued the, the mask mandates and everything, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, just, they're full of it, man. And yeah, yeah I don't trust them. Yeah, I you're and with good reason. So um, where can everybody find you to donate and uh, and, and just keep uh, keep uh, you know in contact with what you got going on? Yeah, yeah. please check out the website. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember, at least for me. Uh, it's TonyCowden.com. There you and go. If, you know, my Facebook page, personal and the campaign page is Tony Cowden. And then my Instagram is Tony underscore Cowden underscore four NC. And, um, you know, I still put a lot of information out and I'll still put some shooting stuff out. I try to keep it pretty interesting. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, the reality is, you know, people say, well, you know, why should I donate to your campaign? I tell them the same reason you should donate to Jay Collins campaign or any of the other folks that I mentioned, those green berets, those seals, those G G watt vets, because, I may not be running in the district you live in, in Texas or in Arizona or in New York or California, Mm -hmm. but you mean to tell me what California representative Pelosi does and says that affect all of America? Yeah, man. It's no longer just a district thing, right? My, My primary concern is my, the people in my district. Secondary is the people in my state and tertiary, the people of the United States. And those three things are hardly in sequence, right? Yeah. They're in parallel. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it, man. That's it. It's um pretty cut and dry, man. Pretty simple. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I wish you the best of luck. I I I I think I think this year is gonna be a big year for for guys like you. Um I, I hope so. The, the game's always rigged against you, but we'll uh yeah. we'll hope hopefully uh we can get we can get a little push for you. That's, and uh, it, it's definitely rigged against this, right? But I tell you what, there's still nothing that the American people can't vote, right? Even all the, you know, everybody's like, oh, voting, man, and, you know, elections are rigged. Yeah, probably so. But guess what? If we show up in an overwhelming amount for these primaries and these upcoming yep. midterms, they can't cheat that much. Yeah. So go fucking vote. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's right. You know? That's right. Just vote. Literally yep. takes minutes of your day. 
Yep. And do do 10 minutes of worth of research beforehand and you'll find out pretty quick. I mean, just do a little bit of research to go yeah. and, and read, vote for the right back. person. <laughs> you know, if yeah. you're not, vote for someone who's not already in office. <laughs> yeah, that, that's even better. <laughs> well, Tony, I, I appreciate your time, man. I got to get back at it, but uh, I'd love to have you back sometime. We'll, uh, you know, Definitely. we'll keep we'll stay in touch and uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk a little shooting next time and uh, tell some more stories or something. Hell yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Hey, I appreciate it, man. You're welcome back anytime. Right on. Thank you. Yep. You bet. Hey, take care. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Everybody else. Thanks for tuning in and move your ass. We're burning daylight. Up in the morning beneath the stars so bright. Pull your hat down, make sure your cinch is tight. Horse is kind of snuffy, cold chill up your spine. We'll get your ass moving, sun will burn on daylight. Till the job's done right